I'm delighted for this next session. I guess what we'll do it on this side, I guess, because uh, we're going to. I'm going to have the opportunity to sit down with a um, a leader uh, in this space. Very apropos of our discussion of direct to consumer. Very apropos of marketing technology and data, and and in particular to follow a conversation about commerce and how we can accelerate both media. And, and marketing to uh, to spur on uh, commerce. So uh, I'd like to um, ask us Stephanie J uh, of uh, Walmart. Come on up, join me. Hey, great yeah, to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I, Stephanie, th I, this is great. It, it's it's I think it's uh, very appropriate that we're having this conversation within 20 miles of San Bruno, which is otherwise known as HQ2 for Walmart, right? Yeah. yeah. So forget, you know, Amazon with their big fanfare announcements. <laughs> Screw you. You guys have been in San Bruno for many years, right? We have been in San Bruno for a long time. Uh, probably we're on year 12 or so. Year 12. See, yeah. so without all the I am headed to Bentonville in about four hours. You know, okay. <laughs> you know what? All roads do lead to Bentonville. So, um, we, we talked a lot this morning in our in our kickoff presentation. You you heard the uh, I know it's a four letter word, the A word, uh, uh, being being uh, being banted about. Again, th they've done a lot. I would say uh, uh, connecting sort of uh, f starting at the bottom of the funnel, commerce, and and sort of moving up into media to sort of try and optimize. I think the path down, and also while at it, discovering. Uh, new opportunities for business uh, lines and, and obviously a material amount of revenue. I think there was a latest figure is a $10 billion uh, media centric run rate of, of revenue. Um, first of all, you run Walmart Media Group. Walmart Media Group is all of four months old. Around that. Great. Can you tell us what is the mission of Walmart Media Group? Because I'm not sure it's had as much uh, widespread sort of, uh, again, uh, fluff as uh, the boys in Seattle. Sure, sure. Um, so first, uh, Walmart has been in the advertising business for many more than four months, right? We've probably started um, uh, what people could have heard, WMX, which is our data management platform, um, seven or eight years ago. Um, we rebranded and kind of relaunched this effort four or five months ago, um, uh, earlier this year. Um, because there's a completely new read focused on it. I think we kind of dabbled in this business mm -hmm. in the past, not really knowing what advertising was, not really knowing what media was, not really understanding that we sat on a lot of really important data, but not really knowing how to do that. Um, you know, Mark Laurie, um, who has made a lot of changes at Walmart, um, a lot of changes at e-commerce, um, asked me to take on this role about 18 months ago and said, can you please just relook at our strategy and think about you know, what should ads be at Walmart and what can we be doing? Um, because the banners that are on the page right now aren't cutting it for me. Um, and so we've, you know, rethought that. So as part of this all effort, we, we relaunched and said, okay, Walmart is in this business. Um, there's incredible, um, you know, Terry, you and I have talked a lot about this. Ads and commerce converging, they're one and the same in my mind. I think they're one and the same in your mind. Yep. I'm not sure they're one and the same in everyone's mind at my company, but we're working towards that. Um, and we can talk about that. Um, but this is um, a completely new refocus. And this is, you know, if you think about D2C, how do we take brands closer um, to the customer? Um, and I really view myself as a vehicle for that, mm. right? Um, and our mission is enabling brands to reach customers. It's the very first line of our mission. So really bringing that close together um, to deliver, um, to be at the right time and place. Mm -hmm. So not just time in person, but place, right? And that's the, at the home, at the store, you know, this is the omni piece that I can actually deliver. Um, and then the right content, the right advertising experiences. So again, not just banners on the page, mm -hmm. but how do we really engage with the customer differently? Not just about conversion, but across the entire journey. And the last piece of it is, um, but, and, and how do we do that that enhances the Walmart shopping journey? Um, so actually really tying in that ad strategy with the commerce strategy. Right. And I think that makes a big difference in terms of how we thought about it in the past. Well, that, that certainly sounds a, like a far more uh, evolved than just the sort of ads on the website. Because I mean, it's, it's 
you're a huge publisher, right? I mean, it's a yep. massive website in terms of in terms of reach. How? Give me a sense for the ambition. Yeah. Uh, uh, how are they thinking about this in Bentonville? How is Mark thinking about it? How are you thinking about the notion of all right, if the other guys are ten billion and, and rising, like how central, how core is this opportunity, and where, how will that manifest itself? What kind of products might we see? Technologies, capabilities that you'll either grow or acquire in order to sort of fulfill on that mission. Sure. Um, so Doug McMillan, our CEO, um, uh, pretty recently at our investor community day in New York, um, or I think this year in Bentonville, um, he talked a lot about our ecosystem, mm. right? And I think this is a big change. And ecosystem is kind of an old word, but you know, for Walmart to really be thinking ourselves not just as a retailer, but really as an ecosystem. Right. And so if you looked at that map and how we're looking across, it, it's an ecosystem, a platform call, company, call it whatever you want, but ads is very much part of that. Okay. Um, uh, it's, you know, he would put it in the camp of B2B services, right. right? So our brands, and I think that's also where we are evolving as Walmart, you know, um, thinking about much more brand friendly. How do we become a platform for brands? Um, understanding, you know, all the companies that we've bought um, with with e-commerce and um, and across the all the digitally native brands that we've brought mm -hmm. on board, right? This enables a much more fluid conversation with the customer um, and a much more um, you know a, a diverse retailer, right? We right. look very different right. than we did um, many years ago, and um, we've learned a lot from a lot of the work that we've done in China, different things, and so um, we're, we're evolving from that perspective. Um, what we're building uh, and or or growing and, and what's the ambition? I like to say, you know, if you look at the CPG guys or the big, you know, manufacturers, Walmart is somewhere between 10 to 30 percent of their sales volume. How much do you wow. think we should be of their marketing volume? Wow! <laughs> right? Wow! Uh, there's just a big th there's a big piece there. Yep. Um, and in, in the piece that we can actually connect the offline and the online piece mm -hmm. that no one else can. I mean, I think y you made that point, which is we live on the coast and we live and breathe on the coast, but 90% of the the population watches TV, and that's how you reach them. Well, 90% of the population is actually still shopping in stores, right? Um, Online penetration is is very high in certain categories, right. but still very low in a lot of other categories. Yeah, the the the, the fifty percent market share that Amazon has is of ten yes. percent or eleven percent. Yes. That is all commerce that happens to be online. You are the market leader in the ninety percent or eighty nine percent category. That's right. I always say, you know, I gotta get to Bentonville because that's the three hundred billion dollar business that I gotta talk with. Right. Um. And 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 connect and and making sure that's connected and. And I think, first of all, e-commerce and stores, as, as merchant and commerce is merging, if we do ads in the right way and we bring that all together, that's there. So I would say very ambitious. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say Doug's on board with it because our experience is if it's not championed by the top uh, of an organization, you, you're, you're basically you know, uh, shadow boxing. It's, it's very, very difficult to get traction. And, and we note that in the telecom world, um, the, the, the prime example is AT&T with their new uh, Xander yep. uh, division, which is, which is new for them. This, I mean, it, it, they, they've been in the business, but, but they're now going to get into a much bigger way. And all you have to do is hear Randall Stevenson talk at, a, at an investor conference, and all he talks is about is, you know, Xander, 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 lesser, Xander, lesser. So <laughs> it's great when the $300 billion, you know, the CEO, is on board, driving it, the proponent, because uh, you know the way organizations w work, right? The antibodies will come out on something new and just kill it uh, pretty, pretty quickly. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. <clears throat> I want to delve a little bit deeper on this notion of the offline because that is a comparative advantage yep. that you like far and away. I mean, I guess what Target is like the the distant, distant, distant second player, yep. and then it sort of doesn't matter after that. Right. Um, but but it is one where you crush Amazon, <laughs> rarely do you get to say that, uh, crush Amazon in terms of retail sales. How, d talk to me about how you, you step on the gas on that comparative advantage in terms of data collected f at the store level. Yeah, um, I, I think that's exactly right. Our, our, we are, 95% of the US population has shopped at a Walmart in the last year, right? 
it, it's kind of incredible. I think you know, 90% of our stores are, are within five miles of a customer. Um, we launched online grocery a few years ago. Um, this is where uh, the customer goes to the store, picks it up. They don't need to go in the store. They literally don't need to get out of the car. Groceries, they, they order on, on their app and, and it delivers. It's been really life changing, mm -hmm. right, for, for our customer. And you know, we obviously had a huge debate at the time, which is, well, do we do, do delivery or do we do online grocery pickup? Do we do delivery? And it's, it's neither nor. It's right. whatever the customer wants, right. first of all. Um, but we've seen a huge trend because the busy mom who is running from school pickup to soccer doesn't want to sit at home waiting for the grocery deliveries or the pickup, or like she waits at home for the cable guy, right? Um, and so being able to connect with the customer that way is incredible. Um, so all of that data, right, from all the transactions, both online and in our store, so 140,000 uh, million uh, transactions in a store a week, right? So that data is what fuels mm -hmm. our ad platform. Mm -hmm. um, wow. uh, and uh, that is where we're able to target, uh, find um, any of the users um, and any of our customers, um, whether it's very granular, right? Um, we ran a campaign, lapsed Hershey Kiss, uh, buyers, right? Who it's it's an impulse mm. category. Mm -hmm. It's um, you know checkout, it's not right? easy to find them right yep. at checkout, right? How else are you going to actually be able to find and and target those particular users? So we always talk about we can go very granular uh, in terms of the audience that you're trying to find, yep. but we can find them at scale because actually there's shockingly a lot of lobster she gives buyers. Right. Um, so um, that data um, is 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 definitely. I always say Mark handed me a, a company with an innate competitive advantage. You know, I yeah. feel really lucky yeah. to be able to do that. I better not screw it up. <laughs> but um, you know, it's, uh, it's to be able to work off of that is a great starting point for yeah. us. It's still early days, yep. right? We've got a lot of uh, building, partnering um, uh, to do and, um, and buying to do. There we go. Uh, there's there a, we go. I was uh, waiting for it. The shoe <laughs> dropped. <laughs> there's an ex-corp dev person sitting in the seat, yes. right? So I think that also is a testament to, you know, Understanding what our growth prospects are and and what we need to do. So, 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 so you're a huge platform. You got a unique and massive data set at this huge opportunity at the intersection of commerce and media. Um, you can't do it all yourself, right? You got yeah. this huge platform. So you mentioned build, partner, buy to the marketing technology ecosystem. By the way, say hello to the marketing technology <laughs> ecosystem. Hi, hello. ecosystem. Um, how will you interact with them? How will you partner? acquire, how will these people in this room, how can they become a partner of yours to help you succeed in their mission and, and why not earn a few shekels for themselves? Yeah, um, we, we already, you know, obviously, uh, we have a core that we have built ourselves and continue to build and enhance on. Um, as things are very close to the, the data piece of it and how we think about our customer data is obviously probably where we're gonna build more, mm -hmm. right? And um, and, and, and keep that pretty close to home. Uh, but we, we do partner already uh, with Athnexus, with LiveRamp, you know, uh, all, all of the matching that we need to do, mm -hmm. further reach, um, media buying, different places like that are all places that we are, you know, very much looking to partner and grow um, and buy, right? I mean, I obviously, uh, I think this room would probably laugh at me if I said we're gonna buy it, build it all from start to finish. They'd say good luck with that. Uh, we'll see a different GM sitting up here in a couple of years. <laughs> um, and so, um, and I don't have to. The beauty right. is, is that actually this uh, industry and this system has evolved and there's a lot of players up there that I think can be super additive to what we're doing. Um, and, and you know, I, we, don't, we don't want the whole shebang. There's a lot of good stuff and, and a lot of not so good stuff out there. Um, uh, and being, I think, sitting, you know, as an ex-banker, understanding kind of how we parse through that is, is part of my job and, right. and something that I really look forward to doing. And, and why we're spending a lot of time um, in at WHQ too. Yes. Um, so you have done uh, a number of acquisitions. You that's a uh, that's a muscle that you have uh, you have uh, exercised, um, and, and and including on the on the DDC side, I I made the point that uh, I believed uh, again outside in. That one of the rationales of the um, of the Jet.com deal was getting Mark Laurie and and infusing Walmart with that sort of new fresh blood and sort of cultural infusion. It, was I smoking dope or was that is that real? And, nope. and how is it how is it 
how is it going now that you're a year and a half in? That uh, you know chart you put up with like you know CMO versus versus CGO, yeah. right? Um, Mark's a catalyst, right? Um, uh, he is a uh, someone once called him, you know, kind of a magician. He really understand. First of all, he understands the customer so well. Um, but but the amount of transformation and change that we've experienced through that through our acquisition of Jet um, are, uh, ha has been really tremendous. We've seen such a a, a flood of talent. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you know there's we, you know management team has changed. Uh, uh, the way we look at the structure of of, of our e-commerce team has changed. Um, the way that we interact with Bentonville has changed. Um, it's really, I think, given us both the credibility and the kind of innovation leg that we needed. Yep. Um, and so you see that throughout the whole company, I think now. Doug's, Doug's going through a big tra digital transformation. Sure. So not just at e-commerce, obviously, but overall from, from that whole piece. And so I think Mark's been an incredible partner for him um, in, in working through that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we, we look at ourselves as the biggest startup within the biggest company, right? right. Um, and I think... That's a lot of fun, it's complex. There's a lot of legacy stuff that we have to deal with that Mark, I think, well, it, the great thing is having Mark at the table and be like, I don't understand. Like, it, that right. shouldn't happen, right? right? And, and to challenge even, even existing e-commerce, right? And to challenge us, so um, uh, for sure, it's a catalyst, it's been going great. Um, and uh, and I, I think we'll have more to come. He's obviously also on an acquisition yeah. um, tear. We love that. Um, <laughs> final question. I'm curious about your personal journey. How, I mean, you're, you're an ex-investment banker. We'll, we'll try and forgive that. Yeah. You're Canadian. We'll, 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 we'll forgive that. <laughs> I will. <laughs> in fact, not only are you Canadian, you're from a small province in the eastern seaboard of Canada. Yes. Also like me. Um, and so uh, how would you end up here? Um, I have always followed my... I've always wanted to learn and, and be part of growth. Um, and I actually started at a startup before I got to Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, an internet. Oh, the, the Goliath. The Goliath. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. that was the yeah, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 at a uh, internet strategy firm in the late 90s. Um, yeah, we knew so, what strategy was. Yes. <laughs> but we did websites for, you know, BCG and, and, and things like that. It was kind of an interesting time. But... Um, I actually stayed at Goldman much longer than I probably ever thought I would. Probably thought I'd be in an entrepreneurial place for, for a long time. Right. Um, but um, finding places where companies are growing, being close to the consumer is something that's always been very um, close to something that I've loved to do. Spending time with new companies and growth pieces. Um, I spent most of my years in consumer retail uh, watching a lot of these companies sure. uh, grow and change. Um, and um, at, uh, I also then led strategy for our executive office team and our CEO there. Yep. I worked for the company finally as opposed to being on the, on the financial services side and, and being a service provider and really loved that, so decided to make the move to corporate. And um, you know, obviously started CorpDev for a period of time. Mark said, why don't you run this business? Um, it's very data-centric and analytical. I think mm. you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had no idea, right? Um, being a banker and, and not spending time in, in the marketing space, right. you kind of think, oh, marketing, it's this kind of soft met brand messaging type thing that we can't really find tangible. And having these two worlds collide for yep. me has been really incredible. Awesome. Well, I think it's super exciting. The world's largest startup you know, within a, a corporate entity that's a, that's a massive, giant, Huge opportunity ahead. I love the messaging around build by partner. Did you hear the partner stuff and buy part? Anybody notice? Yeah. Um, but she's leaving for Bentonville, so you got to get her quick. Um, thank you very much for yeah, coming here thanks today. Thanks for having me.